So today for a few minutes, I'm going to be speaking on the subject, our God is faithful. Faithful means to be true to one's word. Promises, vows, etc. Steady in allegiance or affection. Loyal, constant, reliable, trusted, etc. It is true that faithful people are not easy to find in our world today. However, God has been faithful to us. Yeah. Hallelujah! Amen. He is still faithful today. And he always will be faithful. Somebody ought to give God praise in the house for his faithfulness. Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! Yes, praise the name of the Lord! Yes, if God was not faithful, we would not be here today. Lamentation 3 verse 21 says, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Verse 22 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Hallelujah. Verse 23 says, They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Somebody give God praise for his great faithfulness today. Amen. We are living witnesses of it. Hallelujah. He has been faithful to us in so many ways. Thank you, Jesus. God is merciful. He is compassionate to the entire human race. His mercies and, and his grace, his compassion, they don't fail. They knew every morning. Hallelujah. Every morning we awake, we get a fresh dose. Hallelujah. Of his mercies and his compassions. Hallelujah. He's compassionate to the whole world. Praise the name of the Lord. God's faithfulness is not normal. It is not just average. It's not just ordinary. Somebody say great in the house. Great, great is God's faithfulness. Hallelujah. It's great. It's more than normal. It's more than just ordinary. It's great. Somebody say great again. Great is God's faithfulness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We have sinned against God so many times. In words, in thoughts, and in deeds. Uh, time after time, we have not been how we ought to be. And if God was like man, he would have just consumed us. He would have just chucked us aside a long time. But thank God for his mercies. And thank God for his grace. Every morning. Hallelujah! Great is God's faithfulness. Morning by morning. New mercies I see. Hallelujah! All that we have needed, our God has provided. Great is God's faithfulness, Lord unto me. Do I have a witness in the house that God is faithful? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Even when we are not faithful, he's faithful. Amen. Great is God's faithfulness to all of us. Amen. We should never take his mercies, his compassion and faithfulness for granted. Amen. We need to be grateful. And we need to glorify him for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Not only should we praise and glorify our faithful God with our lips. He deserves to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Our entire lifestyle should glorify him. Amen. You may say, Pastor, you don't know the temptations that I am facing today. You don't know the trials that I'm going through right now. I find myself yielding to these temptations day in and day out. I find myself failing God day in and day out. I can't see any way of escape. I feel like I'm trapped in my condition. But God is sending a word today to encourage you. 
First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says, There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Amen. Every person, every, we are all over the world. It's common to man. Temptation is common. But the, the word of God did not end there. The scripture go on to say, but God is faithful. Hallelujah. Somebody say God is faithful in the house. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Somebody give God praise in the house. He's not going to give you more than you can manage. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's not going to give you more than you can bear. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Not only is our physical lives preserved, but God's faithfulness, faithfulness, by God's faithfulness, but our spiritual lives also, our God is faithful in ensuring that we, we are not tempted above that we are able, but he will also make a way to escape. Amen. Amen. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. No matter what temptation you are facing in this world, with the supernatural help of this faithful God, amen, we can overcome them all. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows exactly how much we can manage. And when we least expect, he's going to make a way of escape. Amen. Somebody give God praise for making a way where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. And the word of God told us in the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Behold I will do a new thing. Amen. Even now it shall spring forth. Hallelujah. Shall ye not know it? Come on somebody. Behold I'm going to make a way in the wilderness. Hallelujah. And rivers in the desert. Somebody give God praise for opening up supernatural doors on behalf of his people. Come on somebody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He's making a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are going through a patch right now that is called a desert time. A financial desert. Amen. A spiritual desert. No matter how you turn it and, and twist it, you just find desert everywhere. But God said, I'm not going to let the desert condition get the better of you. I'm going to transform the desert. Say amen. And make rivers to show up in the midst of the desert. Hallelujah. And the wilderness that you may be in, it might seem thick. You can't see the way forward. You can't see the way left nor right. It's a wilderness to us at the bush. Us at the trees. And it looks so dense and you can't see the way. And the wilderness sometimes have wild animals in it too. But no matter what kind of wilderness you find yourself in today, God says he's going to make a way in the wilderness. Somebody give God praise for the way, man. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't see the way, but God knows the way. In the midst of the wilderness. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And he's not going to just let a little stream show up in the, in the desert. He's not going to just let a little oasis or stream show up in the, in the desert, but rivers in the desert. God is going to bring big time transformation in this house. Big time transformation for his people who will just stand upon his promises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The tide must turn in our favor. Somebody ought to give God a good praise in the house, man. God is talking good today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's going to turn it around in our favor. Doesn't matter what it looks like right now. It's not over until God says it's over. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. 
For the people who will stand upon his promises and who will stand upon his word. Amen. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is faithful. And he knows exactly how much we can manage. How much we can be. And he's going to make a way of escape for us. And the way of escape is going to turn up. Amen. Right on time. Amen. The test is not designed to kill you. The test is not designed to destroy you. Amen. After you have been tried like Brother Job, you will come out like pure gold. Amen. The test is only refining you. The test is only qualifying you. Come on, somebody. Amen. After you have been through your test and you pass your test, you're going to get your promotion. Come on, somebody. Amen. God is going to elevate somebody. Amen. Who will just stand upon his promises. Amen. He will turn it all around for you. Amen. The best is yet to come. Amen. God is going to turn up right on time. Hey, hallelujah. He's going to break through. Right when we need him the most. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. It is true that it's not easy all the time to serve God in faithfulness. Anything that God, but it is possible. It is possible. Anything that God commands us to do, we can do it with his help. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen. Hallelujah. And we can do likewise. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Tells us of some things that God expects us to do faithfully as his children. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Just like how he's faithful to us, God expects his children to be faithful. Amen. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. And the first scripture we're going to look at in that same 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 is verse 16. It says, rejoice evermore. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We need to be joyful people because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Joy is also good for our health. Amen. Proverbs 17 verse 22 says, a merry heart do it good like a medicine. Amen. Hallelujah. But a broken spirit dry at the bones. Some versions say a joyful heart or a cheerful heart, a rejoicing heart, a glad heart, etc. Amen. And it is a good medicine. Amen. If we practice to constantly rejoice in God's presence. Amen. And to glorify his name. We will become a lot stronger. In our we will become a lot healthier. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And we will not be easily depressed. We will not be easily melancholy. Because we are exercising the joy of the Lord. Amen. And enjoying the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And Philippians 4 verse 4 backs, it up, backs this up by telling us rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Amen. Amen. We're not rejoicing in man. We're not re rejoicing in what we have achieved or what we have acquired. But we're rejoicing in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And there's always something to rejoice in the Lord about. Because God is just good. He's just awesome. And that's why the psalmist David did say, Oh, praise the Lord for he is good. Amen. For his mercy is endured forever. And he said, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Amen. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. Hallelujah. There is always a lot to glorify the Lord for. Amen. Because he's just worthy. So rejoice in the Lord always. Not now and again. All the time. Constantly. Not just on Sundays. Not just uh, once a week. 
Oh, once a day, but rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. And again, I say, rejoice. I'm emphasizing it. The Psalm, the, the, the Philip, right of the Philippian, um, the Apostle Paul is saying, I'm starting the verse with rejoice, and I'm emphasizing again. Back home, we used to say, I'm telling you again. Listen to what I'm saying again. In case you miss it the first time, again I say, rejoice. Somebody give God praise in the house, man, because that's what God wants us to do. Amen. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 17 goes on to tell us, pray without ceasing. Amen. We can't pray enough. In this season, we need to pray no more than ever before. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, men are always to pray not to faint. And first and second Chronicles 7 verse 14 tells us that if my people, amen, who are called by his name, we just humble ourselves. That's what God wants us to do. All over the world, humble ourselves and pray. Seek his face. And turn from our wicked ways. Amen. The Lord wants us to be humble. The Lord wants us to pray. He wants us to seek his face. And he wants us to turn from our wicked ways. God's people all over need to repent. Amen. Get back to holiness. Get back to righteousness. Get back to sanctification. Amen. And if we do that. Come down, say, pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Then he said he's going to hear from heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. The God that we are serving is not just telling us to pray for the sake of it. He's telling us to pray because he's a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. He will hear from heaven. Amen. He will forgive our sins and he will heal our land. Somebody give God praise for answering prayer today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, we are living witnesses that God hears and answers prayer. I often tell people if God was not hearing and answering prayer, none of us would have been here. But God has heard our cry so many a times and answered our prayers. Somebody ought to give God praise for his answer, his answers to your prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a lot of prayers that the Lord has answered on our behalf and the least thing we can do when he answers our prayer is to come back and tell him, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to be grateful. Amen. Effectual, fervent, prayer of a righteous man avail it much. Verse 18 goes on to tell us in everything Give thanks. Amen. I like the apostle, man. He's emphasizing and he's re-emphasizing. Amen. Hallelujah. In everything, give thanks. And that's the thing with a lot of people today. They're not grateful. All they do is complain. Every time you see them carrying long face. This wrong, that wrong. The other wrong, everything else wrong. They're never cheerful. They're never excited. They're never having a, a, a good time of just giving God worship. And the Lord don't want us to be among the complaining crowd. The Lord want to be among those who will in everything give God thanks. Come on, somebody. No matter what you're going to take him, God thanks. In everything, hallelujah, give him thanks. Hallelujah. In the midst of it, still praise him. I often tell people, you may say your situation bad. You may say your situation rough. But let me tell you something. In the midst of it, there is a lot to give God thanks for. Yeah, yeah. Because it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. And let me tell you something. So when some people see what we're bawling about, and we're complaining about, they're laughing. They're saying, I can't even tell you half my story. Because what you're going through is a daddle. It's a little joke in comparison to what they're facing. And I saw some people sometimes when I went to Africa and various parts, they don't have much. But let me tell you, when it comes to praising God, you can't stop them. So we who have so much, we should be even more grateful. Stop the complaining. Stop the mourning. And stop the, 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 the melancholiness. 
Let us cheer up ourselves. Amen. Paul told the people of God, the people who was on the ship with him, he told them, be of good cheer. Come on, somebody. I believe God, cheer up yourself, somebody. In the midst of what you're going through, still give God thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Merry heart. It's good like medicine. Amen. Praise is a mighty weapon of war. Now let me tell you something. God's people have to learn to utilize the very spiritual weapons in this time. Because it's not everything that we can just pray for in one go and it will manifest. And we're going to have to use some various strategies. And one of the weapons of our warfare is praise. You should always marry prayer and praise together. You could tell God. After you tell him about any situation. Lord, I haven't seen the answer yet. But even in the midst of what I'm going through. I'm going to give you praise in advance. Somebody just, just give God advance praise today. Lord, I'm still going through, but I still praise you. It could have been worse. Amen. I could have been on the hospital bed today. Amen. I could have been in a mental institute, but God, I'm in your house. And just for that, I'm grateful. And I'm giving you thanks in everything. I give you thanks. Hallelujah. Because this is the will of God concerning me. Amen. I am grateful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is worthy. God is worthy to be exalted. In the midst of everything that we are going through, let us give God thanks. Amen. But this is the will of God concerning you. Amen. Everything may not be how you want it yet, but still give God thanks. Amen. And you know what I noticed? That when we start giving God the thanks and the glory for small things, God bless us with bigger things. So sometimes we have to be, we, sometimes when you look and you see that some people don't even have eyesight and they can't see and you have your two eyes and they're giving you 20-20 vision, that's a lot to give God praise for. Come on, somebody. Amen. It could have been otherwise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Some can't, some don't have hands, some don't have feet, some can't smell, some can't taste. But thank God, some, some got ears but they can't hear. Thank God we have all these functioning parts of our bodies. Amen. And thank God we're not on the hospital bed today. God has blessed us with good health so that we are in his house to praise him and just for all that he has done. Amen. In the midst of whatever I'm passing through, I'm looking on the good bits and for those good things that I'm taking for granted, I want to say, Lord, I apologize. I'm sorry for taking anything for granted. And in the midst of whatever I'm going through, in the midst of whatever I'm passing through, I'm still bringing glory and worship to your name. Somebody praise God for the good things that you've got. I could have been otherwise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And one thing we should always remember to give God thanks for is for sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Throughout this the, the pandemic season, so many people, they went mad. The constant lockdown and the constant stress and all that got to them and they, they couldn't make it. And after we just came out of pandemic season, the rough times that we had, we, we, we know that we came up against economic hardship. Wars and rumors of wars and economic hardship globally. And some people, when they don't have God, they start going low core. They can't cope. But thank God, in the midst of all that is happening in the world today, we have sound mind. Somebody give God praise for sound mind. Hallelujah. And everything give thanks. Amen the will of God concerning us. Amen. God has blessed us with a lot to give him glory for. And let us never be ungrateful people, but bring glory and worship to the Lord at all times in the midst of whatever you're passing through. And I'm convinced from my own, own experience, and many others would have experienced as well, that when we have a grateful heart and we give God glory in the midst of whatever we're passing through, God comes through for us. 
Amen. Sometimes we just switch off the situation and just start to just give God glory. And when we least expect, God turns up. And it turns things around in our favor. Somebody just give the Lord praise today. And we have a grateful heart. Hallelujah! That's what he wants us to do. In the midst of it all, let us be grateful. Hallelujah. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for ministering to us today. Truly you're speaking and truly you're moving by your spirit. No, God, we ask in you in your name, Lord. We thank you, first of all, for your faithfulness. Oh, hallelujah, you're faithful. Your mercies are new every morning and great is your faithfulness. Lord, if you were not faithful, we would not be here. You have brought us through pandemic times. You have brought us through all sorts of sicknesses. You have brought us through all sorts of stress and all sorts of headaches. But God, we are still on the land of the living. Hallelujah. We're not in the hospital bed. We're not in the mental institute. We're in your house to praise you. And we are grateful. Vast could have been the difference. But Lord, you have preserved us until now. And we are thankful. And how can we forget to thank God for salvation? We could have been like the man out there knocking about still in sin. But God has saved us and called us by name. Come on, somebody. And we are part of his kingdom today. How can we be unthankful? When the Lord has picked us and called us out of sin. The Lord has saved our souls. The Lord has baptized many of us with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! We give you thanks for every material blessing, every spiritual blessing, every blessing that you sent our way. We are grateful for it, Lord. Help us to praise you more. Help us to serve you better. Help us to apply these principles, Lord, because you're faithful and we want to be faithful to you in return. Amen. The word of God tells us to be faithful until death and we will receive a crown of life. Help us to be faithful people. And that we will walk, oh God, in holiness, walk in righteousness. And that we will be your arm extended. We will do what you command us to do in your word. Lord, just make us more like you. That we will serve you better. This faithful God deserves to be glorified and to be praised. And to be magnified and to be reverenced. Amen. Because he's so good and we want to do our best. Amen. The word of God says the goodness of God leadeth men to repentance. Amen. So we want to be more like you. Have your way with us as we go. Cover us all under the blood. Give us a victorious week. Amen. Every absent one, give them the absent portion of blessings. We're going to give you the glory for hearing and for answering our prayer today. Minister to everyone at the point of our knees. Those who need healing, heal to the Lord. Those who need deliverance, deliver today. Those who need salvation, we're praying that you will save them to the Lord. This faithful God deserves to be served. So convict somebody, Lord, who is hearing your word. Whether by the internet, whether in the house, whether on the radio, convict them today. And help them, oh God, to see the need to turn themselves over to God before it is too late. Have your way, we pray. We know you're coming back soon. And you're coming back for people, amen, a church without spot or ring. Help us to be part of such a church. Keep our hearts in tune with you throughout this week and beyond. And we will give you the glory. Every absent one, bless them and give them the absent portion of blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, and we say amen and amen. Somebody give God praise for his faithfulness, his goodness, his mercies. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word, and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ.
If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.